Okay. Um. So we're playing a little bit of a brew tonight. Um. This is this is something I've been working on for a couple weeks now. Um. This is this is Naya Nahiri. Uh. We have essentially what we're doing is we have this ramp package from Ponza to ramp into our four drop our three and four drops of four Tyler's Tracker. Uh, four Blood Braid Elf, four Nahiri Harbinger, and three Kitchen Finks. Um, and so, like, all of these are pure card advantage. Tyler, Tyler's Tracker makes it where we have essentially no bad top decks once it's in play, because it turns all of our lands into extra cards. Nahiri turns all of our, our dead cards into extra cards, eventually ults to get Emrakul and kills them. Um, and then, like, Blood Braid Elf can cascade into... Any, anything down here. Um, we have the scavenging news, kitchen things. It's just like generic dudes to help like stabilize. Um, four bolt, four path, four lightning helix. It's just a way of one being able to clean up the game after Emrakul, and two as spot removal. Um, in the board, we have a couple planeswalkers in the form of Johnny Vengeance, Chandra Torch of Defiance, um, another. Another hoser against control and thrun, a um, little bit of, a little bit of affinity and artifact hate and ancient grudge, stony silence, a couple, couple more scavenging oozes for granny matchups, graveyard hate as well, a uh, couple relics, torpa orb for humans, um, timely reinforcements for burn, uh, probably the mid range decks too, just like Jund, uh, probably not just guy. See like what else? Like, the dude's deck that, like, we need to go wide against the, the, to help block and all that good stuff. And then we have a single Wrath in the board as well. So, uh, I'm really interested in seeing how this works. I've played a single match with the deck, and I cast Turn 2 Blood Braid Elf into Bolt Your Goyf to, to like, stabilize. So, uh, deck is super cool. I don't know how well this is going to go, so we're going to go find out. And a hearing, play points. All right, cool. Okay, cool. I was gonna say I wasn't sure if my uh, my music was playing in the background or not. It's not, so we're good there. I'm real excited for this. I think this deck looks really sweet on paper. I would love to play first. Um, so this is probably it's probably gonna get basic basic forest, just so we can't get ghost like we can't get a field of ruined off of it. And then this Utopia Sprawl is going to be on red. Okay, this hand is turn to Blood Braid Elf if our Arbor Elf lives. Like, we definitely look like Ponza right now. I lied, this is not turn to uh, Blood Braid. Because we have to. We don't have a second green source to put this Utopia Sprawl from. But we have it next turn, so that's cool. I'm 
interested in what our opponent's doing over here. Um, so this might be a little bit of missequencing just because we have tireless strikers in our decks. But I want to go ahead and get, go ahead and get a stomping ground here. And blood braid. Helix you. And then I'm going to attack for six and then play the scavenging is. Yeah, that might have, like, that could have been considered uh, missequencing, depending on, like, what we would have top decked. Oh. Um. Creature or land. Okay. Oh, well, I'm eating that with scavenging news, so. Bolt you. Present lethal. Make you block. Sure. So we have a lot of live top decks here. Three Blood Braid, three Lightning Helix, three Bolt. I mean, plus, like, we just have attackers. Um, I definitely want these relics. I definitely want these scavenging uses. And past that, I really don't know. Um, unburial rights might mean this is the Abzan rights list that uh, Saffron Olive played, isn't it? Is anyone? Let's go. Resto, Seed Rhino, Ashen Rider, Thrag Tusk. Yeah, those those all look like they uh I want these torpor orbs. Yeah, uh, I think I want to bring in these torpor orbs. And a little bounder. Yeah, I want these torpor orbs. Maybe something like this. This looks fine. Yeah, let's try this. Let's run this. So we don't have ramp, but we have two removal spells plus a tracker into Nahiri. This hand's fine. <clears throat> this Winslow Teeth's probably getting Temple Garden. Just so we have Path and Helix available to us.
I'm going to play this Mountain and Pass. Um, I'm probably going to be playing Tracker on 4. It depends on what our opponent does. Right now, I'm, I'm fine with playing Tracker. Just so we can like start getting our clock going. Nahiri is also quite the clock, though. Like, I don't have anything I want to discard yet. What did we take? The Quagmire? No. It took a Resto Angel. Okay. This is fine. They're almost 100% going to take a tireless tracker here, I would think. It's probably argument to Lightning Helix in response. Let me just play this planes and pass. So the next turn we can go tracker and do make a clue. And here we have path plus helix up. It might be right to play blood braid and try to hit uh try to get a torpor orb off of it. If you're going to stack, we're going past it. Yeah, this is definitely Abzan rights. So. Mm -mm. Meaning, I would like to get. So I can go Tracker plus Arbor Elf here, and I think that's what I want to do. Just make two clues. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm I'm always interested in looking at Bruce. Um, do you have a Do you have a link for me? If so, just uh, just go ahead and post it in chat, and I'll I'll look at it here in just a second. Yeah, I I would really like to draw a Torp Orb. This gets only lands, right? This is sweet. Everything that's going on here I like. Weakest path to, path to XL I've ever seen in my life. So Prismatic Omen, Valakut. And then we have the Knight Retreat Package. Yeah, this is, this is really cool. I'm intrigued why, with the inclusion of um, Engineer Explosives and the Lotus Balloon, I feel like those should just be two more summer packs. I I actually really like Secure Tri Builder. I think that card's very, very good. Oh, that's cute. That's real cute.
what is war gate gets permanent right so it can go get your prismatic omen that's real that's real cute I don't think I want to play this land out yet, just because I probably want to loot it away with Nahiri. Mm -mm -mm. I'm also intrigued by the, the one walking ballista. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, you right, you right. Weakest unburial rights I've ever seen in my life. Mm -mm -mm. And this gets eaten by Nahiri. I think Nahiri's actually going to loot here. Ditch this helix. And then I've, I'm not going to attack here because I want to leave this uh, this blood drain back to block. So we can path the angel. Block the thrag tusk. Oh, that probably should have been Sacred Foundry. I don't think it actually matters, but... And then trade with the Strag Tusk. This is Sacred Foundry. So now we get to leave up cracking our clue. We also leave a bolt.
I feel real behind here. So I can block here, bolt here, take three, Nahiri goes to two. I can crack a clue, block here, Nahiri dies. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll block the hissing quagmire. Let's start by cracking a clue. We can loot away this land. I'm gonna go and play this land because that leaves up relic plus cracking this clue. Path. Path. Hmm. Okay. Six lines an interesting one. I I really like uh, Secure Tribe Builder. I think that card's very very good, and I think it's in a good spot right now in modern. You call my honest opinion. Well, Torpor Orb's probably a little too late. Um, so I really like the idea. I mean, this Dry Arbor is really spicy, too. This deck is really sweet. Um, I would be interested in seeing... Man, I, I really don't know on this one. Like, I... What does Amulet Titan board look like? 
Because you're you're kinda on the same axis as like Amulet Titan, but then like you also have this Night of the Reliquary plan as well. I think it's handsome mulligan. Ah yes, the the good old Emrakul. I'll keep this though. I mean, so this this deck reminds me a lot of like Amulet Titan and Scape Shift and like Bant Retreat. So like you're you're trying to combine three different archetypes into one. And I don't I don't think that's a bad thing in any way. But I think like you need to you need to look at their boards and see what they do to determine like what you want to do in your board. Um you could definitely play like Wear Tear just in like Stony Silence and Rest in Peace. Like all the white enchantments are really good. Um because we're ramping, you can play like Thrag Tusk as well. And is like another thing you can just go get off of Summer Respect. Thrag Tusk and uh, Kitchen Finks is like Burn Hate. Really? Why does everyone bring in Rex Age against us? Like, I know we have Utopia Sprawls, but they're not the only deck to have done that so far. Double Path is really good for us. Unfortunately, we just had this uncastable Emrakul in our hand. I wonder how they deal with that one. That was a really good draw. Kept in Lingering Souls, that's, that's good to know. 
I think this card's really good, too. I'm a big, big fan of Lingering Souls. Hmm. All right, now I just want to draw lands. I want them to not be able to answer my Tireless Tracker and for me to draw either lands or really good spells. So I'm doing this so I can get a clue off my tireless tracker. I know this is probably a little unorthodox, but... Mm -hmm. Let me bottom the card. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Opponent, opponent wrote in chat, he's like, man, man, Torbor Orb is really good against me. I'm like, yes, yes, it is. We really need to find an answer to these spirits, and I don't think I brought one in. So we're almost halfway to being able to cast this in cool. All right, we're over halfway to casting this Ember Cool. And we're dead in two turns to these spirits. Alright, I'm at six. I'm not cracking this fetch because I have three tireless trackers on my deck to draw towards. Hmm. I'm bolting a token. <laughs> so 
When I'm at nine, they can do ten. Cool. Hopefully they don't see the line of attack with my stirring wildwood. Oh, darn, they, they saw the line of attack with my stirring wildwood. All right, so ran a little little cold there. Hey, we're really good at this. Isn't this the guy we just played? I'm going to keep this. We have removal spells into BBE. I'm going to keep this. I'm pretty sure this is the same guy we just played. I've never seen that happen in modern. Ah! What are you doing, Moto? Not my tracker. I think I was gonna punch. This is this is definitely the same guy. They're going to take a BBE here, right? Hey, how we doing? All right, man, you have a good night. Don't work too hard. We have a lot of reach in our hands, so. Now they play a Rhino, and we cry. Actually, Rhino's not even that big of a deal. I should have definitely got a second white source.
So they're dead next turn. Unless they have another Rhino. They have another Rhino. Oh, shit, that's not a Rhino. That's much bigger than a Rhino. Cost four to flashback. Where is it at? Yep, we're probably dead. We're really dead. We're going to die. All right, let's let's get to the board. Give me these. Give me these. Give me this wrath. Give me these. I don't want these sphinx. That seems okay. I want this wrath for their lingering souls, and like when they go wide like that. Well, yeah, we have turn two Nahiri. Or we have turn two Scavenging Ooze plus Eat. That's probably the correct line. But I really like to say turn two Nahiri. This is probably going to get Stomping Grounds. No! My hand, it's so good! They just had to take the scavenging news, though, right? Like, this card beats them single handedly. Like, 
Like, it outgrows their drowning sorrow, and it disrupts everything they want to do. Really? I don't know if I agree with that opponent. I kind of want to play this Relic out, too. So now we need to draw a land to be able to play this Nahiri. Land, Utopia, Sprawl, both do it. It might be a little bit of an oversight not playing any Horizon Canopies either. Like, actually thinking about it now. They have an abrupt decay here. 100% what's going on. Or, uh, Grizzly Salvage is also an instant, so. This is fine. I think I just wanted this forest. It's a really good draw. So now I get to play Nahiri, loot away. I don't think I'm going to need this Helix, whereas the second Nahiri might become useful, so... Okay, that's fine. Because next turn we get to go Tireless Tracker, make our land drop. Then on red. I'm going to go ahead and loot. I mean, go ahead and draw with the tracker. And I'm not going to discard here. So they most likely have Resto Angel here to flash in an end step. Which then pressures my Nahiri. Yep. Cool. Which then I get to play a Johnny to lock it down. It's an interesting inclusion. So 
So Nahiri down to five. So I can take Nahiri down to eat this resto, play this a Johnny to take care of the stirring wildwood. It all depends on what I draw. Preferably it's like a fetch. That'd be great. Fetch land? Fetch land? Yeah, we'll go ahead and eat that. And then I'm going to go ahead and play this relic and pop it. So I have a path to insulate against any dudes. Like that one. That's a dude. Cool, cool. Bonnet had, had enough here. Um, yeah, we'll just plus Nahiri, lock down this thing, punch again. Yeah, we're we're gold for a while. I don't think there's anything I want to change. This deck is sweet. I'm a big fan of everything going on here. Sand needs a lot of help to be good. Anyway, this uncastable is more cool, so I think this is an easy mulligan. Yeah, this hand's fine. We need to draw a land. We need to draw some lands to make this hand really great, but turn on Utopia Sprawl on red. And then, like, if we draw a land, we have to turn to Tracker. I would love to draw that land. So they have Ghost Quarters, but I haven't seen Field of Ruins, but I still think it's always correct to put it on your basic if you have one. Always put Utopia Sprawl on a basic. And I think, if I was my opponent, I probably would have aggressively, uh... So 
So now even if they ghost quarter me, Hmm. So I could relic, crack relic. I could also play tracker plus relic. Problem is then they get to get their other half of lingering souls. Darn, they didn't they didn't click on their lingering souls. They don't have black mana currently though, so that's a good sign for us. And if they ghost quarter me now, I get one, I get a clue, two, I get to I get to activate relic. Probably, probably sitting here debating if they want to go score themselves. Well, now I'm definitely popping relic. And if they block here, I get a pump. If they don't. Resolves. So this is almost 100% getting a black source. I can't think of what they'd be getting, like, what they would be casting here, though. Is Drowning Sorrows double black? That's fine. Resto, Godless Shrine, Acidic Slime. So they took this Heath. I am very, very quickly eating this Restoration Angel. Actually, this Acidic Slime. Either way, both. I think here I'm going to pop the clue, though. I don't know. Should I? Yeah, I think I need to pop this clue.
That's not what I wanted to do. Oops. Oh, well. Oh, well. I, I meant to click on the scavenging news so I could eat the restoration angel, and instead I clicked on the scavenging news to cast it. Oh well. Not not a huge ordeal. And like Drown and Sorrow doesn't get him out of this at this point. Siege Rhino doesn't do it. We've seen zero paths so far, right? Correct. I wonder why they shocked here. Probably Grizzly Salvage or Abrupt Decay. Okay. We just took this. Took the basic swamp. Okay. I don't particularly care about a Siege Rhinoceros. Because I am, as the kids say, a damn professional at this. My hand's great, so it doesn't actually matter what you take here. I'm pushing a lot of damage this turn. They need another moo cow here, right? Yeah. And even that doesn't completely get him out of this.
right on time. GG's. GG's opponent. So I'm terrified to try to queue, like, to queue again because I've played the dude twice now. Alright, let's queue. Well, while we're while we're waiting, we can let's uh let's look at this list some more. What do we what do we think so far? I've been I've been real impressed. Um, like, we might be able to cut a couple lands just to, like, try to mitigate flooding a little bit, but, like, at the same time, we want to reliably cast our four drops. I mean, I, I think, I think the first game we just, oh, that first match we just ran a little, a little cold. This hand's fine. We have turn two Tracker. If we draw Utopia Straw, we have turn two Nahiri. All right, you go, opponent. Burn. That's not a bad draw. So we get to play Tireless Tracker here. Hope they don't have uh, Searing Blaze to punish us for playing this out. Okay, that's a good sign. Oh, that's that's real aggressive. So we need a red source really bad. I would like to draw one of my three main board kitchen finks, please.
Kitchen Faints. One time. So I can actually put this into play tapped. I can get a Sacred Foundry. Oh, that had to be. Yeah, okay. I kind of punted this game. Come on, work with me. And let's fish this temple garden. We're dead to a lot here, so. Cool. All right, I want this timely. I want these scavenging uses. I think I want Thrun over... I think I want Thrun over Chandra. This is just a fat butt that they can't attack through, so... This hand's fine. We have Helix on two. I bunted that game one really hard. Come on, Goblin Guy, be kind to us. Blood Braid Elf. Shrine of Burning Rage. I've never seen that art. That's really that's really cool having Karn in there. I'm gonna fetch a basic planes. So I can helix this. Thanks, Goblin Guy. You're so kind. I'm going to play the Stomping Ground tapped. And then next turn, I can play Tracker plus Land Drop. Actually, I'm probably going to play... I'm going to play BBE next turn. I can play Blood Braid. I can play a Johnny and bolt this. That's probably the line. A Johnny, get rid of this. I'm going to fetch Basic Forest here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so the line's going to be, a Johnny, eat this Monastery Swift Spear. I'm going to lose it to basically any burn spell on the face of the planet. But I want to be able to stabilize the board before I try to start, like, turning the clock. I could also just make it where the Swift Spear doesn't untap. And then I don't lose my Johnny just to any. I actually like that. So now it takes a little bit more to clear my Johnny. So then this turn I have Tracker plus Make Two Clues plus Crack a Clue. And I'm not immediately cracking this because I want to I want to be able to protect my tracker. Whereas if I fetch now it just dies like it I don't get the second clue off of it if I crack it now and they kill it, so So you you want your opponent to be the one to make the first move. I don't think I care about this four three. No, you can have a 4-3. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my basic forest here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I get to... I can lock down a land and helix away this Swiss spear. And we're getting close to just Armageddoning them. I'm going to go ahead and play this one out. I did not realize they could uh, deal damage to Planeswalkers off of that. Huh.
So now trackers out of out of bolt range. If they don't have land here, they can't pop this shrine. Yeah, you can have a four three. So I'm dead to land plus three mana burn spell. No, I'm I'm not dead this turn. I have So I'm dead to any burn spell. I'm dead to any red spell at this point. Any red instant kills me. Cool. Well, so we have a we have a lot of a lot of resources for for burn, and we didn't see we saw our a Johnny, and that's it when it comes to sideboard cards. But like even even main board with scavenging ooze, lightning helix, kitchen finks, these are all cards that like help us stabilize against burn, and we didn't see any of them game one. And we saw exactly Johnny Vincent game two. I think I should have, if I would have, after they uh, Searing Blazed a Johnny, I think if I would have ticked down and gained six life off of him, I would have been able to stabilize. Like just Helix them twice. This hand's fine. Um, we get to go Forest, Utopia, Sprawl on Red into Scavenging Ooze. So this tells me, this looks like Grixis Shadow off the top of my head. Um, could also be like Grixis Control, could be Soul Tie, but I think I think Grixis uh, Shadow is probably probably the most likely. Yeah.
Hmm. So we've kind of had a problem with uh, with red sources. That might be something we need to look into. Like upping the number of red sources in the deck. This is a fat Gurmy. Five fives are really hard for us to deal with. We have enough burn spells that we could just burn them out too. And they have no way of getting this Utopia Sprawl off, so we actually have our red source now, which is really good. Flipped over a Gurmag Angler. Sure, I will gladly cast an Arbor Elf. Okay, this is fine. Ambush Riper is effective. So now we have two, four, five, six mana available to us, which is enough for Nahiri. Okay, so yeah, I'm probably just slamming Nahiri here. Even this threat that's really hard for them to interact with. I don't, I don't think that changes my line. I think I still want to just play Nahiri. I want to plus probably. Okay, that's fine. I I probably should have played the Finx. Like it was I think it was fairly obvious that they were advertising stub there, but That's really pretty. Dominate area like these lands the last several sets have been really, really pretty. Snap bolt. Sure. Immediately punished for cracking that clue last time. Who knew that Tyler's Tracker was a good card?
Sure. And now I get to play... I want to leave the red mana floating so I can try to draw a bolt here. Like, they know I had this Lightning Helix. Okay. Yeah, just, like, eventually run them out of threats. I want all of these. You could probably talk me into the sideboard hate cards, too. Uh, Torpor Orb's good against exactly Snapcaster, so I don't think that's worth coming in. Whereas, like, Relic and Scavenging Use also hate on, on Snapcaster. I don't think I want the run in this matchup. And I don't think I want the relics either. Um Maybe something like this. Just load up on, on our top end. Like Arbor Elf is just going to die to like lightning bolt and lightning bolt and fatal push. Whereas Utopia Sprawl doesn't get hit by anything. I think this is fine. Like we can we can afford to cut ramp in this matchup because we're not we're not racing. We are the control deck and like need to pre prevent them from uh from playing a fat butt. Which like we have we have four paths to deal with. We have uh just eight burn spells plus Looks like our, our uh, Blood Raid Elves as well, just like push damage when we need to. And then we have the Planeswalker package up top as well that's going to be really hard for them to interact with. We're, we're just basically trying to overload their removal spells, and eventually they're going to run out of one, and we're going to have a threat that they can't answer. And this is fine. We go Skews and the like Helix. Yeah, this is great. Eventually get to play the Starless Tracker and crack a couple clues. Our hand's great. This is the classic turn one Death Shadow. Well, our burn plan might be good this game. As we draw more burn. 
Man, this scavenging is hungry. He's going to be a hungry, hungry boy. Sure. This is just free mana ramp. This is going to go on. Probably. Probably red. So now. Now next time we get to play tracker on three. And, and leave up. Cra uh, like play a clue. So. That Utopia Thrall is actually a very very good draw. Casually put them to 11, holding six points of burn in our hand. If they fetch here, I'm going to fetch a response. Uh, this is going to get, I guess, just basic mountain. So I can leave a bolt this turn if need be. Fatal push. Yep, that's fine. So, they're dead on our turn, unless they have stub, which I think them going to this low, like, tells me they have stub. Bolt you. And I'm going to go ahead and shot this in. Because one, it lets me crack a clue if I need to. Two, it lets me helix him if need be. That's fine. Okay. They have two cards in hand. What is the chance that they have stub? Basically 100%, right? Like they have to always have stub? Cool. Okay. So if they, if they don't have stub there... I get to block Kitchen Finks on the Tassiker this turn. They had to leave Snapcaster back. And then they're dead to removal spell on the Snapcaster. Which, like, I'm just going to draw a billion cards. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm so far, I'm pretty satisfied with this list. Um, we we kind of punted. We punted game one against Burn. 
Um, not fetching the the stomping ground when I had the Arbor Elf out to cast Nahiri. So that cost us two points. Um, we were we were probably dead that game regardless. But I think it's still important to realize, like, there are minor things that you can be able to, to do to, like, increase your percentage points. Um, on top of that, like, we also saw zero Kitchen Finks, zero Lightning Helixes, and no Scavenging Ooze, like, game one. We also saw only a Johnny Vengeance game two. So, like, I don't think that's that match is justifiable of, like, exactly how that matchup plays out. Um... I think the second match against the Abzan right deck is how that matchup is probably supposed to go. Um, not realizing, realizing how much of an impact Lingering Souls has in that matchup um, is probably a mistake, and it definitely costs us. This hand is great because we have turn two Nahiri. If we draw a land. Yeah, if we draw a green producing land, we have turn two Nahiri. And we're playing against aristocrats. I'm going to go ahead and get stomping ground here. So if we don't draw... If we don't draw a green, a, a green source, we can play Utopia Sprawl on white, untap play Arbor Elf. I'm never blocking in a million years. And like having double Lightning Helix is really good in this matchup. Like they are, they are an aggro deck. Or are they just tokens? So next time we get to play Nahiri, loot away Nahiri, have Lightning Helix up. If we find a land, we get to play Kitchen Finks instead. Actually, depending on what we draw, we might not even loot second Nahiri away. We have we have almost a forty percent chance of drawing a land each each draw. So we are we are pretty likely to hit one in these two draws. And it's really really convenient that Nahiri can deal with an intangible intangible virtue. I think I, I think I want to go ahead and play out this this kitchen finks. I'm not overly worried about keeping this Nahiri around. I'm more worried about us trying to stabilize. Man, this Nahiri is really really powerful. That card is very very good. No attack is really good for us, too. And here... 
Here, I think I'm going to pitch the second A theory. Cost five to activate. Yeah, we'll smash with Kitchen Finks. Block with the Doom Traveler. Get the freest block in the history of mankind. Why is that thing an instant? That's real obnoxious. This is real obnoxious. Oh, before... Me. All at me. Like, now to here you can take care of this thing again. Like, this card is very, very powerful. How have they taken five? Did they hurt off their, their caves? They shouldn't have, right? Oh, they shot on turn one. They shot so they could play Doom Traveler on turn one. I'm going to bolt my Kitchen Finks. One, so I can gain two life, and two, to prevent it from getting exiled off this path. I'm fine trading off these Arbor Elves at this point. Like, I have enough mana that, like, I can do basically everything I want to, so I'm not entirely worried about it. I would like to draw a good card. It's not what I would consider a good one. And here I'm just going to pass back. This game's about protecting this thing here at this point. They have third intangible virtue. We're probably in for a little bit of hurt. I feel like that might have been a good draw. Of 
Always yield. Always yield. I feel like that also might have been a good one. Oh, I probably should have... And again, I'm just going to pass here. Like this tireless tracker has already drawn us two cards, so. Spectral Procession. It's real good. I don't have a I don't have a good way of dealing with flyers game one. I'm going to start on this Blood Red Elf because if I hit another Tireless Tracker, I want to be able to follow it up with this land. My my sequencing has been really bad. I should I should have fetched and cracked these clues. Before I tried to loot with Nahiri. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I have technically I have lethal on board. I'd really like them to attack with these spirits so I can Nahiri exile one. I would not I almost would not be opposed to Nihiri down tick play the second Nihiri down tick on these tokens. That's probably not the correct line. So I think I think the best possible cards they could have right now is another intangible virtue or lingering souls. What is this, Soren? Sword's really good too. That's gonna force me to start attacking. You should. I, I would definitely be attacking with these spirits and then Nahiri. I think this is very, very correct. I don't understand that attack, but okay. Nahiri's at five.
I want to pitch this Utopia Sprawl, I think. Double Path is not bad. I'm going to start by smushing into this Thorn. Yep. That's fine. Kitchen Finks comes back. And I'm, I'm probably going to path both of these spirits this turn. It depends on what their attacks look like. Pathing a token does not feel good, in case anyone's curious. And now, like, I get to pressure their sword in this turn. Legion's Landing is a real good addition to this deck. I want to start with that one. I'm going to go ahead and pitch this Nahiri. That makes a clue. Probably block here, block here, let Soren die. Yeah, it, it would make sense to really. I I would actually figure they wanted to to clear some of this damage. Well, on a good note, they can't flip this Legion's landing this turn. Okay, cool. Okay. Post board. I want this Wrath of God for sure. I want this Timely. I don't really think there's much else. There's probably an argument for Scavenging Ooze just to like gum up the ground. But I don't think that's a very good plan. Actually, I think it's fine if we just, like, cut these four paths. Keep in our bolts and helixes and just add a couple more threats. This looks fine. Just try to gum up the ground. Try to avoid lingering souls and spectral procession. Yeah, this seems fine. They're probably going to have rally, or, uh... Sure. I, I will admit I was not ready for a modern staple ley line of the meek. Yeah, 
Leyline of the Meek. Sure. Is this you control or is it creature tokens? Yes, it makes my title so much better. <laughs> That's awesome. That's fine. They get to flip their allegiance landing this turn. But I get to make I get to make six power off of this timely. This is going to get second planes because if I draw my Wrath of God, I want to be able to cast it. And I have no good attacks, so I'm just going to pass. And I am 100% trading off tokens. And this is not a May, so they had to flip this. So Timely was a three mana gain 12 life here. And immediately eat this lingering souls. We're probably super dead. But hopefully we can try to stabilize. I'm not sure how, but so I'm pr I'm probably gonna trade with this tireless tracker this turn because it allows scavenging ooze to grow to the point where it can block these creatures profitably. I really need to hit a removal spell off of that. So we're just dead to these these tokens, so we'll go ahead and scoop it up, go to go to game three. Try to have a, a little better hand here on the play. Not gonna lie, I kinda want like an anger of the gods or just like another sweeper. Um, just because like the go wide strategies so far have been pretty pretty hard for us to combat. Yeah, I'll keep this. We really need a tireless tracker. So this Utopia's Brawl is going on white. This Wooded Foothills is getting a second white source. 
And we're going to try to stabilize. Not saying it's a good plan. Not saying it's a plan that's going to work. But we have turn three Wrath of God. Man, this hand is not very good, but... Tireless Tracker. Tireless Tracker. Kitchen Finks is not a bad one. Is it actually helps insulate against, like, it helps us with Wrath. That's not a bad draw, actually. I'll block. Take it three. Gather the council or uh, raise the alarm. Yeah. Flip your legions landing. Cry when I cast this wrath of God. No land would be great for us. If they don't have a land here, it'd be really, really fantastic for us. Well, of course they have the land. So tap out then. Well, of course they don't tap out. Maybe we can... Yeah, let's see what happens. I think we're just in a racing situation. Like, they can make a token here, but they still take three. That's really bad for me. That's really, really bad. So now I don't have a, a follow-up to this Wrath. Okay, yeah, we're we're definitely rafting this turn. Hopefully they just go like lingering souls, flashback lingering souls here. Soren? That's really bad for us. Yeah, we'll take our ten. I'm not happy about it though.
Obviously, they block here. Now, hopefully, what they do is they down tick Soren, and then I can bolt the Soren to get rid of it. Okay. Tireless Tracker would be fantastic. Nahiri. Like we have a lot of live draws here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, we can almost cast Emrakul too. That's the worst part. Like, Arbor Elf would almost get us there. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, we're real close. But I don't think it's going to be good enough. I think we're just going to die to these tokens. Yep. Drew one too many lands. Which is really unfortunate. I I think 23 might be... 23 is probably one too many. And you could probably... Probably cut it for... Maybe just like another scavenging who's main... That's not what I want. I want that one. GG's opponent, GG's. So yeah, I, I definitely think we have one too many lands. I'm not sure what I want in that spot. Um, it could be Kitchen Finks number four. It could be Scavenging Goose number two in the main. It could be, it could be timely. I've been, I've been real impressed with this card so far in Modern. Um, I don't think, I think I want another sweeper in the board as well. So maybe I could see something like, like either another Wrath of God or like an Anger of the Gods. Anger is a non-bow with, with Kitchen Finks, which I kind of want to avoid. But but Scavenging Ooze and Tracker can both outgrow it. Maybe it needs to be like Coastalex Return. So then we can actually like, like just an instant speed Wrath would be fine. Maybe something like that. I'm I'm not sure. Um, I would I would like to try a couple minor changes and run this back, um, but I think I think that's gonna do it for me tonight. Um, I had to, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night tonight. Um, thank you everybody for coming by. My name is Carter Noble. For those who don't know me personally, you can find me on on Twitch here at Mister Missouri Twenty Five. You can find me on YouTube at Carter Noble. Uh, you can find me at Twitter at Carter Noble Twenty Five. Um, this video is going up on YouTube momentarily, so if you didn't get to catch the entire league, you can catch it on there. Um, so thank you everybody for coming by. Have a fantastic night. Peace.